How you guys doing? My name is Byron. I don't know if any of you have met me. Some of you guys might see me on Twitter. My name is Byron Road. Um, I work with Ben sitting in the front there. We have a little agency called Tangram, and our biggest uh, CMS, I guess, is WordPress. So it's an honor to be here. Um, today, whoa, I, I like my booming voice, but not that bad. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the WordPress admin. Basically, we work with WordPress every single day, and it's quite simple. We know exactly where to go, what to do, but our clients don't always know what to do. So when they get in the back there, it's quite, quite confusing. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to try and do. There's a lot to, to figure out. So what we're going to try and do, and the, the purpose of this talk, is to make it a bit easier for everybody to, to kind of work their way around and for clients to work their way around. So today we're going to talk about five different things. User roles. Um, user roles, obviously, we're all admins, but you generally want to give your, you don't want to give your client full admin rights because they'll break the website. So you want to give them editor or publishing rights. Um, the second thing is the login screen. We see it every single day. We know exactly what it looks like. We know if the WordPress logo is there to look in the URL, and we know exactly what website we're looking at. Um, the dashboard, also again a very confusing area, there's wordpress.com blog posts coming in, there's different areas that people don't really care about um, and don't need to see. Um, the content editor, also again very confusing and 9 out of 10 clients use Microsoft Word to write their, their content. So you've got Smiley, Comic Sans, you've got Bold, you've got Italics. And to end off, just a few other considerations of things you can do to make the experience for clients a little bit better. For user roles, basically, what, what I recommend um, is to create a clean admin account, one that you want to give to your clients that they will never use. But if I get hit by a bus or um, they decide to use another developer, you want to kind of go with that, that they can go in and change things without being forced to this uh, editor's role. Um, what you will do is you'll give your client privileges as an editor only, so they don't have the ability to change layout, etc. those kind of things. They can mainly publish text, and you, know, you don't want to break all the hard work that they've just spent money on by them changing a widget or messing up with a bit of the footer. When you're in the code and you're, you're kind of building these kind of things, there's a, a function that WordPress provides is current user can, and that kind of, you can give it privileges. And what we recommend using going forward is to wrap all of your, uh, your functions with the current user can. So in this example, we don't want the administrator to see any of these changes. We want admin to see the full use, but anybody below that, we want them to see this new easier admin section we're going to provide. So if current user can't do any admin roles, that's where you're going to run your functions. The login screen. We all know the first section. We've been there. I expect most of you have been there at least, you know, a hundred times this morning already. Um, so, you know, when a client comes to that website, they're kind of a bit confused. Where are we? Why are we here? What are we doing? So a simple thing to do would be to change the logo. Um, it can be done by hooking into the login head section. Oh, my bad, sorry. And uh, adjusting some CSS to, to change the logo and remove the standard WordPress logo. The dashboard. The dashboard is, uh, it's not very a neat dashboard. It's kind of like your old mini. There's breadcrumbs, there's, there's bits of old wrappers. You want to kind of have it looking nice like a new Audi, so tidy it up. Ask yourself, does the client need this item? If they don't, will the client use this item? Most likely not. And is this item an enhancement? And if you've answered no to all three of those questions, then chances are that's something that should not be in the dashboard. This is the kind of idea that the dashboard should look like, less uh, bulky. Um, even the quick press, I think I would take out for clients because they're probably going to end up putting something that they don't want to do. But the idea is that what you would like to do is when they land here is have something decent that kind of introduces them to the dashboard, explains what they can do, and maybe even you know, use something like a contact form where they can contact you if they have a problem. 
those are kind of things that people don't think about and you can, you can add in. So to work with this, you would hook into uh, WordPress dashboard setup. You would globalize the WordPress meta boxes and then unset the ones that you don't want to have uh, available. Just to, before I carry on, there's a plugin that has been developed. I, I didn't do the development. This wasn't initially my speech. So basically, the plugin has been developed and will be on the WordCamp website later. You can download it and kind of get an idea of, of what's been done and advance on it. Use it, don't use it. Um, this is what I was explaining. So what we've done now is we've welcomed me to this website, explained a few little things, told them how to do a few little things, and then the nice question and answer form. And if you really, if you really wanted to be helpful, you could maybe actually answer some of those you know, the guy's probably going to ask you IE7 related questions, but it, you know, that's entirely up to you. We're also going to want to remove a few things. The links commenter that came up the other day on, uh, on Twitter, Carl Hancock of Gravity Forms asked if anybody has ever used the links or the old blog roll section. I've never used it. I don't know how many people do, but your client sh certainly doesn't need it. Um, most static websites, and they're not going to need comments. You're designing a five-page BMB website. They don't need comments, you know. Um, and the press this tools or the export and import facilities, those are things they don't need. So we can remove that. And to do that, you would basically hook into the admin menu, globalize menu. And again, th this is very, very simple. But you would go through the list of menu arrays and unset the ones that you don't want to be visible. If you're feeling uh, a little bit, uh, I guess, if you're feeling courageous, you could give them the ability to have theme editing rights. Now, an editor in WordPress doesn't have that capability. Um, but you might want to take out widgets, for example, or something like that that you don't want them to have access to, but you still want them to be able to change the background colors or whatever. You've probably taken your name off the bottom of the website because it's going to look like lolcats or whatever, you know. But at the end of the day, you can do that, and you just have to basically, there's an object called the role object. You can hook into it, and you can add capacity or add functionality. And there we have said that they can have edit theme options, which will bring you the appearance menu. But you definitely want to remove widgets. Widgets are the bane of WordPress for me. I, I don't think they work all that well, even though people do use them. I, I, I try not to use them um, because people can break things. Um, you can again hook into the admin head, globalize the submenu array, and unset themes.php, and array number seven there is the one that removes the widgets menu completely. The content editor. Nine out of 10 times, the client's not going to even bother to change the post. He's not going to worry too much about SEO. And if he does worry about SEO, he's probably got somebody that does it for him that has offered him top one page ranking for $99. So give them access. Let them do what they need to do. You can remove that. Um, I've gone kind of made it fairly simple if you guys want the slides to see where to get into all these things. But you would basically hook, in, hook into admin head, create a function, and hide it all with CSS. The post tag section, also a very abused part of, of, uh, of Web 2.0 with the nice tag cloud at the bottom. Something that's probably not necessarily needed for your client. And again, you can remove it. Um, and we go on to Microsoft Word's pasting. Microsoft Word is very annoying. Um, you can uh, use 9, 10, 20 different fonts, different colors. Um, there's a paste to text, a paste from text and a paste from Word button, but your client's not going to remember to use that. And if you have, uh, if you have decided to uh, make it nice and responsive like Jason's stuff and then use decent fonts, it's probably not going to work. So there is a hook, and it allows us to hook into TinyMC Editor and basically force plain text pasting. So you can kind of just go, well, you know what? It doesn't matter where you've come from. Paste it as plain text, which I think is a fantastic thing for Nina. Most of us, even, even text edit, I see, is, is pulling in some stuff now on, on the Mac. So it's a good thing to. So 
again, in your functions file or in your plugin, wherever you would hook into the tiny MCE before, init function and force is plain text. Again, there's a little bit more. There's a bit of JavaScript that you need to, to throw in, but that's all in the plugin at the end, um, which will be on the site. Another cool thing that you can use and which we do love using is short codes. Um, your, your client or his content writer decides that they want to fill in an email address. It, there is the link button, but they're not going to use it again. And it's quite confusing. You don't know that you have to press a drop down to change it to a mail to function. You, so you can create them a short code, very straight and simple, but they're probably going to forget to use that short code again. And you can assume, I, I've had bad clients, and maybe, maybe I'm bad, but I've had clients that do forget, and then they phone you, and you have to charge them for tech help on the phone. So you can create a simple short code. Most of you know how to create a simple short code. If you don't, there's lots of help on the WordPress website for creating short codes. Very straightforward and simple. But you can add a nice button to the, to the editor, and it would... Uh, you know, basically you can uh, give your client that little button and he would just type it, select the text, and press the short code. Custom meta boxes, custom post types, custom taxonomies, custom, custom. There's quite a few custom things that have come out lately in the latest versions of, versions, versions of WordPress. <laughs> and uh, um, we love them. I mean, we use them all the time. But you might have a section on your website that you want specific content. You don't want them to fill it in the body. It might be a little blue box that you filled in. It might be whatever it is. But you can create a meta box and allow them to add their own custom content to there. And that stops it breaking the layout or them putting little pictures of cats. Um, admin in it is the hook again. There's a little uh, function called add meta box. I've not gone into the full detail because it's a, got about 10 different variables. but. You can get the gist of it on the, on the WordPress uh, codex. What happens, though, if they decide now to use their short code in that little box, or they press line breaks? You know, in the real world, that's going to happen. WordPress doesn't have good functionality in the custom uh, meta section. It li literally is plain text, so you now see that the short code hasn't rendered and neither have the line breaks. So PHP has a fancy little function called new line to break, and what it'll do is it will honor any line breaks in the code, and WordPress have a fancy little function called do short code. And what that will do is it will take any of the text that reads in, in the content variable there, and it will, if it finds a short code, it will apply the, the filters to the short code. So there's a little bit of extra code there at the bottom. Um, basically, yeah, that, uh, that shows you how to do it. That is your result now. You'll, as you'll see, there is a, uh, a email address, and the line breaks have been attained. You'll also know, if you've worked with widgets quite a bit, that widgets also don't honor short codes. Short codes don't work in, in, in the widgets. There's a, a little filter called widget text, and you can apply that very same do short code filter by going apply or add filter to widget text, do short code, and that will allow the widgets to, to end. The is, list is endless. Cheese and rice, that went quicker than I thought. Um, there's some other considerations to take into account with, with your. <coughs> Is it me or is it? Okay, cool. Um, sometimes you, you, your client wants to have their contact details put on their website, all over the website. They, they do. You will have built them a contact page, but they still want it somewhere. Instead of hard coding it into the theme, you can just create a little custom page in the WordPress dashboard, and you can let them fill in their details there. That way, you know. You don't have to worry about hard coding it every time. What else did I say here? Ah, allowing for errors. We all know that you need to prefix a URL with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. It's in our blood, but I've watched my mom on the computer, and she doesn't. So if you're teaching them how to create a link, the chances are they're going to forget that part. So simply, you can have a look at the first line. 
what is going to happen is it's going to go to yourwebsite.com forward slash facebook.com. That's not going to work. A little simple thing you can run as a filter on all the content in your website is to use the string position and look for HTTP in your URL. If HTTP is not there, add it to the URL. And if it is, then it's fine. And you'll notice that www.facebook works with the HTTP prefix and without. All of them will work. This entire thing that I spoke about, there's a, a plugin that will be available for download. This is something to consider. Build it for yourself. I, I don't like plugins. I, I think that plugins are the bane of WordPress. Again, I, I think there's a lot of things that, that get abused. People build them incorrectly. But this is a nice plugin that you could use to ease, I, I guess, your development with clients. You would just load it in. Everything would be done for them. You wouldn't have to go through this process again. Um, in conclusion, if it's difficult to update, your site won't get updated. So the, the idea behind this is that even as a technical person, if we had to go through six bells and whistles every time to just update a post, blog post, if we had to log into six different firewalls, chances are you're not going to update the website. So if your client can't even find a way to type in a title and content, they're not going to update their website. And it's, it's just not worth it at the end of the day. If your client wants a pink back end with a picture of a lolcat, give it to them. Make it easier. Let them do what they want. You know, but ju just consider the client. Uh, too many times as developers, we tend to forget that the client doesn't always know as, what, as much as what we do. And that's, that's practically it, guys. That's all that I have.